Here is the drawing that you're going to do of a bevel gear in assignment 4. And both the, the assignment and the PowerPoint slides say the same things. So we'll mostly look at the PowerPoint slides. Um, it tells you to make two views, a circular view and a section view. And it tells you what to dimension. And it tells you what to put in the gear data table. And then farther down in the assignment, it shows you this um, dimensioned section view. All right, let's go over to our PowerPoint slides and go through this a little bit. I say draw a, a simplified back view and what I mean by that is that the circular view should be on the left side of this section view for the reason that, do I have that, uh, yeah, here's a, an, an example from the book. This is a different gear, but it illustrates the point. In this gear, you have a hub sticking out the back of the gear. And you need to show that hub with a visible line. If you were to put your circular view off to the right of this section view, that hub would be a hidden line. It wouldn't be visible anymore. And uh, that is less clear. So you want to arrange them in this order. Let's see, anything else here? Basically, the dimensions that are shown here are the dimensions that you will put on your drawing. And the numbers given at the bottom of the page here uh, that I've highlighted with a bracket are the numbers that you will put in your gear data table. The one number he does not give us is the circular thickness, so you will need to use that table that we saw at the end of the last lecture. Use that table out of our book and calculate the circular thickness. So you'll have your views in this order and you'll have a gear data table somewhere on your sheet with backing up with these data plus the circular thickness. Okay. In your circular view, remember that the pitch line is represented by a center line type and make sure you include a center line for the circular view and another one going through the section view. And then the outside diameter and the root diameter will be phantom lines. Basic idea again is that you're dimensioning the features that are the gear blank before the teeth are cut and then you're giving a table for the person who's setting up their gear hobbing machine so that they will cut the teeth correctly. In um, this view, notice that this far outside diameter uh, 8.211 it has parentheses around it. That is a reference dimension you could include that if you want. It, some people find that helpful so they know what size of gear blank they're starting with. But that is not a dimension that can be manufactured to or inspected to. That has to be a reference dimension. And in my opinion, this 2.611 should have been a reference dimension also we cannot actually ask them to manufacture that size. So, okay, let me see what else. Um, you will need to give a dimension for the size of the hole that goes through the middle of the gear. Yours is, where is it? Shaft diameter 1.5. So your circular hole here will be diameter 1.5. And you will also need to give 
tolerance dimensions for the width of the keyway and the depth of the keyway. You will not have these numbers, of course, because this is from some other gear out of our book. You'll need to look these up. If you know that you will have a one and a half diameter shaft, then you can use these keyway tables that we used last week to look up what size is your keyway. Aha, it's three eighths of an inch. And if you have an inch and a half diameter shaft, what depth is the keyway? There it is, 1.289. And, oh, sorry, wrong, wrong, not that. Uh, you're looking for the depth of the keyway in the hub, so you're looking for dimension T. You want 1.669, that's your keyway depth. Then you'll go to the third table where you have a key that's 3 eighths of an inch, so it's this first line for keys up to and including half an inch. Here is the tolerance for the keyway width, not the key, but the keyway. And then here is the tolerance for the depth, not in the shaft, but in the hub. So here's the width for the keyway, and here's the depth for the hub keyway. And that goes with a hub depth that is 1.669. Now, when you draw this section view, first of all, you should go into your units and change the units in the angle. Um, I should have AutoCAD open. Sorry about that. I don't. Uh, under the big red A, the drawing utilities, you can set the units and uh, go to the angle and set it to two decimal places so that when you're drawing in these lines you can enter them precisely. Right now your title block will only recognize whole number degrees so you wouldn't be able to draw these. Let me know if that is confusing to you and we'll clear that up or we'll look at a CAD drawing. Alright, so you'll set your unit uh, your angle precision. Then start here. He tells you that the pitch diameter is 8 inches. So draw a horizontal center line somewhere and you can offset 4 inches up and 4 inches down. That will give you two construction lines that are 8 inches apart and your pitch line is going to intersect those two lines that are eight inches apart. But first, draw those two lines and the center line. Next, draw this pitch angle, and that's from the horizontal center line up to the pitch line that goes through the tooth that angle is 65 degrees. So draw that pitch line 65 degrees above this center line. May I suggest that after you draw it, you dimension that angle. Get, get an angle dimension command and just dimension it and make sure that it really is 65 degrees and, you know, that you're going the right direction with that angle. Okay, now you've got this horizontal center line and this 65 degree center line. The next thing to do is draw the back side of the tooth. And how do you know where to draw it? Let me back up. You have this construction line, two construction lines that are eight inches apart, where that construction line intersects your 65 degree pitch line at that dot. At that dot, draw a construction line that's perpendicular 
to this 65 degree pitch line. Now right now we don't know how long to make that line, so we'll just make it perpendicular to the pitch line right here at the at the intersection with your 8 inch apart pitch diameter lines. Now you have the back cone of your gear tooth. Now you can draw in the addendum. So he tells us the addendum is a quarter of an inch. And what I would do is I would just offset that pitch center line 0.25 out to here. And then he tells us that the hole depth is 9 sixteenths of an inch, 0.5625. So I would offset from this outer offset line back inward 0.5625. Now you'll have three parallel lines, the pitch line, the quarter inch offset, the 9 sixteenths offset, and those mark the end of this line that I've drawn thickly here for the back of the cone. Now look at these angles that he gives you and this is where you need your uh, angle units set to two decimal places so you can draw them. These lines that represent the outside of the tooth and the root of the truth, tooth do not intersect, so don't try to make them intersect. It won't work. Um, I want to say, I want to just repeat about this 2.611 dimension. I know I said it earlier, but now that we're looking at where is the addendum and all that, just to emphasize, this outer corner of your tooth is not going to be exactly 2.611. This was rounded off. Uh, if you do the calculations, you will find out that that distance is actually 2.611346. So this is just approximate. And he should not have given us that as a dimension. Please put parentheses around that. Now, this gear has a threaded hole. What is that for? That is for a set screw. It'll have a, the, the set screw is a hardened, it's a screw with a hardened point on it that you can thread down through this threaded hole and poke into the key so the key won't vibrate out. This is a quarter inch hole. It's a unified national course, so it's got 20 threads per inch. It's a quarter twenty. You don't have to dimension how far apart those threads are. You just put this note with a leader line pointing to the hole. It's a quarter inch hole, so make those hidden lines a quarter inch apart, an eighth of an inch on each side of the center line. Those hidden lines represent the threads. And then offset those center lines about a thirty-second of an inch in from the threads. That is approximate. This is just a, a simplified representation of a threaded hole. Finally, this gear is probably made of a casting, although it might be a machined gear blank. Uh, in any event, it's going to have rounded corners inside and outside. He does not tell us how big the fillet radius is, so it's up to you, the local artist. <laughs> um, make the radius whatever you would like. Uh, you might try a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch and see how you like that. And again, um, please holler if you get confused or run into problems, and we'll figure this out.